Today's lesson is on Cape Physics, where we will be focusing on operational amplifiers. I am Paul Bender. The operational amplifier. I'm sure you might have open circuits and, and, and devices and you saw little square black things in it with all kinds of uh, attachments to it. Well, those are called integrated circuits. But today we will look at a special type of integrated circuit called an operational amplifier. Okay, so let's start. Well, today's lesson, in today's lesson, the objectives are at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what is an op operational amplifier. And there are real and ideal operational amplifiers. You will be able to differentiate between them. All right, and you are, you, they are, they state what are clipping and gain when relating to op amps, distinguish between closed loop and open loop gain, and explain a function of an operational amplifier as a voltage comparator. All right, so then here we have what some of the previous knowledge were things that you should know coming into this lesson. You should know Ohm's law, how to analyze eight AC alternating current voltage, voltage traces and symbols for circuit components. And some key words I want us to focus on today is the operational amplifier clipping, gain, and comparator. Now, before we get into the lesson, um, I had set up two demonstrations for you, but um, we ran into some technical difficulties and so we are, and will not be able to make the demonstrations today, but I will try to um, explain to you what it is that would be transpiring, that should have transpired in the demonstrations. All right, so let's get into the lesson. What is an operational amplifier? It's a uh, op amp, that's the name we use for short, operational amplifier for short is fundamentally a voltage amplifying device. You use it to amplify voltage. You, voltages. You input a small voltage and you output a larger voltage and you can think of your transformer as a voltage amplification device as well. All right? um, and it is designed to be used with external feedback components such as resistors and capacitors between its output and input terminals. And when we look at some op amp circuits, we will see where these devices are used. And um, so why is it called an op amp? Okay, because by virtue of the different feedback configurations, because you can make a, diff a set of different feedback configurations, the op amp can perform a variety of operations and that is what gives you rise to the word operational amplifier because of the various operations that this device can perform we, we call it an operational amplifier it is an amplifier by nature and it can perform various operations therefore operational amplifier and some of the operations that it can perform and we will look at these um, as a comparator, inverting and non-inverting amplifier, a summing amplifier, uh, and a voltage follower. These are some of the, there are a whole myriad of operations that the operational amplifier can perform, but these are just some of them. All right, so physically, an operational amplifier is an integrated circuit. When we talk about the ICs in, in our electronic devices, IC means integrated circuit. It's an integrated de device which consists of two input terminals. We have two input terminals, one output terminal, what are called offset terminals, two of those, and one terminal which is just a, a dummy terminal if you want to call it that way. All right. And these here are just um, two views of what an operational amplifier. These are the connections. These are the terminals, eight of them. And um, it's just inside of a, 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 an embedded device. So 
within an operational amplifier, all right? Internally, the operational amplifier has a, a, a circuit, a myriad of, of various um, electronic components, resistors, capacitors, transistors, and so on, which are embedded. They are embedded in a silicon substrate. Okay, so you, like for instance, here we have, on this thing, we have a resistor, and this is, these are resistors and so on. But within the, within the operational amplifier, all of these things are embedded in a silicon substrate, right? And on this, we can identify, we can identify, um, we can, on this device, we can, let me go back. We can identify um, here are resistors. They have resistors here, the here, and here are two resistors. And this device here, this is a transistor. These are transistors here. But because of how they are and they're embedded in this, in this um, silicon substrate, they look different than they would look as a physical device. So here, here we have those, there, all right? Okay. Now here is a, 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 a diagrammatic representation of the connections to an operational amplifier. So we have eight connections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are numbered anti-clockwise. All right. And um, so this here, these two, number one and number five, are the offset, what are called offset, because what happens is the operational amplifier gives out a direct, a DC output um, under certain conditions. And sometimes you will have to, like it's like zeroing, if you want to call it zero. You know, when you're zeroing an instrument, you may want to use these two terminals to zero the amplifier so that when you have zero input, you have zero output. But normally an, an operational amplifier would give you an output even though when the input is zero because of the internal electrics and so on, all right? And then you have two is inverting and non-inverting. These are the inputs to the operational amplifier. And we will look at these a little bit more. And then you have to power the up amp. You can't get power out if, if there is no source of power, all right? So we have to power the amplifier. So four and seven, are the power connections and six is the output number eight is just a, a dummy maybe that's just to help you to anchor the the um, operational amplifier and when we represent an operational amplifier in a circuit we don't represent it that way but we represent the operational amplifier um, we represent the operational amplifier this way all right so we have terminal two inverting, terminal three non-inverting. This diamond represents, this is the output V out, and these are the power connections, four and seven. All right, seven is positive, four is negative. And so this is how we represent an operational amplifier in a circuit. But when we write, do an operational amplifier in a circuit, generally these two are left out. This is understood that it is being powered and the numbers are also left off, right? We don't, you put them in the circuit because for purposes of, you know, clarity, if you put too much things in a circuit, then it becomes confusing. So you leave it out and we know that we have an input power. We know that we have um, the numbers and what the circuit elements are. All right, so let's, um, let's move on. Now we're gonna look at the difference between what is called an ideal operational amplifier and a real operational amplifier. You know in everything we have our idealisms, right? So for an ideal operation amplifier, the input impedance, impedance is a resistance, right? In, for want of a word, it's, it's a different, but we, that can be explained. But the input resistance of an operation amplifier is, for an ideal is infinite. So what we're saying is that we can put nothing into the operational amplifier and we get something out of it. That's ideal, right? Everybody would want to put nothing and get something, right? And um, so no current force flowing from the source supply into the amplifier's input. 
So that's an ideal operation amplifier. But a real up, up amp, they have input leakage currents ranging from pico amps to milliamps, right? So current actually gets into the operational amplifier in the real up, up amp. So that's one difference. And then the output impedance of an ideal operational amplifier is assumed to be zero. So that means if we have zero output impedance, we can get as large a current as we can from the operational amplifier. And that's, remember, that is ideal. That's ideal. But real up amps have impedances between 100, um, to 100 ohm to 20 kilo ohm range. They, they, um, they, they are in that range. All right? So the ideal up amp, no output impedance. The real up amp, they have some output impedance. And then we have, all right, at this, at this point here, um, let me just go back a little bit, just go back. So. All right. At this point, I had a demonstration, right? And I will want to show you about clipping and we will look at gain as well, right? I want to show you at clipping. Now, this is the circuit that I have here. If you can. All right, this is the circuit that I have here and that is what is being shown here. And this is the diagram diagrammatic representation of the circuit. What is, what, what is obtaining? We will put in input uh, an alternating voltage into the input of the operational amplifier and as a result of that we will get an alternating out an alternating output voltage all right so here is the here is the circuit here is the circuit that we're going to use all right okay now what will happen is that on the on the screen you will see green is input so we will have an input alternating voltage and what we will have um because this was we will have an or uh, uh, an output alternating voltage right so this is out and this is in all right now if you notice that the output is an amplify amplified from the input okay now if we continue to increase if we continue to increase if we increase the input somewhat right if we increase the input what will happen the output will begin to increase as well so the peak voltage will increase as the peak voltage of the input increases so the peak voltage would increase now what will happen after a while when this input reaches to a certain value and the peak voltage of this increases it will turn to a square wave like this this will this will square off like this all right it wouldn't continue it will so it will square off here all right and this value at which it squares off will be equal to the value of this input here so like for instance when this squares off, we will find that the value of the output here will be 9 volts because we are inputting 9 volts into the operational amplifier. And that is called clipping, right? So the output gets clipped at the top. We cannot, we cannot output more than we input into the operational amplifier. If we have any device like that, then it's, it's happy times for us because we can put in very little and get how much out we want out of it, right? And energy conservation tells us that that's not possible, right? So as we go, we will get amplification and no matter how much we increase the input, we can increase the input as much as we want. This value, it will not pass this value. This is the maximum value to which we can get any amplification. But it helps us if we start with very small voltages, we can increase it to very high voltages within 
the, the parameters of how much we input into the operation amplifier. And I wanted to show you that. But um, so this, this effect is called clipping. All right, that's the effect is called clipping. All right. And all right, so this is what you might have seen. You may have noted that below a certain value of the input, the output increased as the input increased. But after a certain of the value of the input, two things happened. The output stopped increasing even as the input increased and the shape of the output trace changed to a square wave. And this phenomenon is called clipping. All right, we call that clipping. Okay, and so, um, so what this, this circuit that we used here, this circuit that we used here, this is what is called a feedback circuit because the output, some of the output is fed back into the input. And we will look a little bit more about that when we look at, in, look at inverting amplifiers and so on. But that is, that is fed back into the... And so when we go to... It says when an up amp is in feedback in a feedback circuit, the gain is defined as the input divided by the output, right? Whatever the sorry. Um, I have it incorrect. Bear my, my apologies. I want to, to correct myself. It's out divided by in. That's the gain, right? And um, So gain A is equal V out divided by V in. Please, please disregard this here. This is incorrect, all right? This is what is correct. V out divided by V in, okay? All right. Now let's go to a little quick quiz here. A little quick quiz. Okay, so here is a here is a trace that you would have seen on the on the um, on the, the screen. So the red represents the output, and the blue represents the input, right? And so it says the illustration shows the V in in blue. This is the input, and V out in red to an up amp with a feedback circuit, right? So that same feedback circuit. The voltage sensitivity, that means that um, if you have, have an understanding of how to read, these are the divisions on the thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So for each division, the height of the trace would be five volts. And for the red, it's 10 volts per division, all right? So it is asking, what is the closed loop gain of the up amp? Right? We want to find what is the closed loop gain. And so if we can click for the answer, all right? Okay, so at five volts per division, the height of the trace is one division, right? That's the height of the trace, one division. So it is the sensitivity, five volts per division by one division, and that would be V in is five volts. And then at 10 volts per division, we have the height of the trace is one two and a half divisions, right? So it is 10 volts of voltage sensitivity by the number of divisions, and that will be 25 volts, right? So the closed loop gain is V out, which is 25, divided by V in, which is five. So the gain is five. The gain doesn't have any units, right? So the gain of that, up, that feedback circuit is five, all right? All right, now, open loop gain now, the open loop gain, and this is a, um, when the amplifier doesn't have any feedback, when the up amp doesn't have any feedback. So if we wanted to look at an open loop circuit, we will have something like this. This is the up amp out. We have V in, this is a minus, and this is our plus. And we have V plus and V minus. All right, and these of course are, are connected to a zero. So this is V out. And that's how we would represent an open loop 
amplifier. All right? All right. Um, so an open loop gain would be V out over delta V. Now, delta V is the difference between this input and this input. They have a small difference between them. And so that is why we say delta V, right? And so delta V is the difference between inverting and non-inverting input, or whichever one is larger, right? And for an operational amplifier, the open loop gain is um, infinite. So we'll just have a quick quiz. Um, an operational amplifier is powered by 15, positive 15 and negative 15 volts. The amplifier has an open loop gain of 100,000. State the output of the amplifier when the voltage difference in the two, to the two inputs is 12 microvolts. All right? So let's see the answer here. All right. So here we have that the output, we have this here, right? Um, All right, let me see if I get a, a darker marker. All right. So we have that, um, we know that the output, all right, one of these must work. Yes, must work. <laughs> so we know that the open loop gain is equal to V out over chain the, the difference in the voltages so that the output would be equal to the open loop gain time, times the change, the difference between the two inputs, right? So the difference between the two inputs is 12 microvolts, right? So that's the 12 microvolts, 12 by 10 to the negative six volts and the gain is 100,000, which is 10 to the 5, all right? So 12 by 10, 10 to the negative 6 by 10 to the 5 will give you 1.2 volts, all right? Okay. Let me put these up. All right. And so for the second part now, for the second part, we have the same thing, that the output, this time it is 2 millivolts, so, right, so it will be 2 millivolts by the... Um, the, the gain, which is 100,000 or 10 to the 5, that will give you 200 volts. But we know that it can't pass 15, 15 volts because 200 volts is not possible because we said that the limit to which the operational amplifier can give you any output is 15 volts, which is the, the input there. And so that here, that output would be 15 volts, all right? Okay, so no matter how much you get for this answer, we know that it's not possible for it to pass 15 volts because that is how much you input into the up, up amp, right? So we'll go back. We look at the last thing, the voltage comparator. And the voltage comparator is a circuit which compares two voltages and switches the output to either high or low state depending on which voltage is higher. In a voltage comparator, one of, one of the input voltages is taken as a reference voltage and the voltage comparators can be configured in inverting or non-inverting mode. That's just some. So let's get into what, how the voltage comparator works. All right, so here is a, a voltage comparator circuit. Again, I was going to show you a demonstration, but this is, this is a, um, what the voltage comparator looks like. This is the circuit here, all right? This is the circuit, this is the up amp, uh, LED, uh, 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 light dependent resistor and other resistors, right? But this is what the diagram looks like. Circuit on a circuit board, diagram, what a diagram looks like, right? And we will see how this, this works, okay? So what, what, what the demonstrator, demonstration would have shown is this is the, 
This is the LED, this is the light dependent resistor. When I, when I cover this resistor, the LED would come on, all right? When I take off my hands and there is light, the LED would come on as well, will be go off, right? So once, if when the place be, when it's dark, this comes on and when it's light, that goes off, all right? So um, that is how that, that would have been showing. And that's what the demonstration. So here, here we are going to look on the function of the voltage comparator, right? Um, oh. All right, let me explain. Here, here these are the currents that are coming from the positive and going down to the, to the earth through the resistors, right? All right, so here we have these currents coming down here, all right? Um, and since no current, little or no current, ideally no current is going to flow in here or here. That's why we have the two stops. So all the current is flowing down, down through these two here, all right? They're flowing straight down. And so since little or no current can flow, all right, um, from this diagram here, the current I, I would be equal to the V here across from here to here, which is 9 volts, would be equal to the potential difference across this plus the potential difference across that. And that is what that is saying here, right? Also, this here, V in this potential difference here is equal to IR. And once we, when we make the substitutions, when we make the substitutions, we will end up with an equation, this equation here. You can do it for yourself, um, and you will see you will end up with that equation. Now, what will happen is that, what will happen? When it is dark, so we have this, this equation here, all right? We have that V in is equal to 9R over RL plus R. All right, RL, this is the light dependent resistor. Okay, and we know that delta V would be equal to V ref minus V in. All right, now what happens when you cover the light dependent resistor and when this becomes dark, this resistance here increases. All right, this resistance here increases, which means that Vn, V in will decrease, all right? Now, when V in decreases, it means that this difference here would become greater. And when this difference here becomes greater, it means that because we know that V out is equal to A naught, delta V. When delta V becomes greater, then this V out becomes large enough now to drive the, the, the LED. All right? So that's how the, that's how the voltage comparator works. Okay? Um, so what we have seen is the use of the operational amplifier in, uh, as a voltage comparator and also as to in, in, in various in various circuit elements, all right? As usual, I, I have a question, and this is a challenge question as usual, all right? Where I take you out of, the, out of the box and ask you to use some of what it is that you would have learned from the lesson. So here is a graph. It shows how the output of an op amp varies with a direct current input, all right? So, Remember, we looked at how the output varies with an alternating input, all right? We had said if we have an alternating input, this is the input, and then we said our output, well, you can look like square, 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 and so on, all right? We said that, that that is what happens, all right? So this is our output and our input, and we said this is clipping. 
Now, what I want you to look at, this is for a direct voltage input, okay? And we see that it goes here in the positive, it goes up to a value, and then it, it doesn't go beyond that irrespective of how high the input voltage goes. After it reaches a certain value, the input voltage increases, but the output voltage stays at 10. And then the same thing in the negative. All right, and so we see, though we can see a similarity between what is happening here and what is happening here. This is an alternating input, direct input, all right? And so it is asking you, it says, what is the magnitude of the input from the power source, all right? And remember we said that it, it will level off at the magnitude of the power source as it did here, all right? And we see it levels off at 10 volts, all right? So the input from the power source would be 10 volts, okay? And it says, what does the gradient of the graph represent, all right? Now, we have, we have a situation here on the graph. We have an input, let's call the input voltage V in, and we'll call the output voltage V out, right? So we have that, um, we have V in, that's the input voltage, and what, what we have, we know that v, v out is equal to the gain times V in, all right? We know that it's equal to the gain times V in. So if we plot a graph of V out against V in, we will get a straight line passing through the origin and the gradient of that graph will be equal to the gain, all right? And so it is asking, what does the gradient of the graph represent? So the gradient of the graph represents the gain of the operational amplifier. And we can find that gain by finding a value for the gradient of the graph, all right? And so here we have, um, from the gradient, we have some, we can use 10 and zero, all right? So we have, so the gradient would be equal to 10 minus zero over, and this is, um, one, two, this is 2.5, 10, and that would be 2.5 minus zero. That would be 10 over 2.5, and that would be equal to four. So it has a gain of four, okay? This is this, this situation, when we use, when we use the alternating inputs, we say we have the phenomena, we call it clipping. When we use direct inputs, we use the term saturation. All right, so we say we meet saturation. So we have negative saturation up here and we have positive saturation. When we looked at the alternating input, we saw that the top of the, the alternating, the, the sinusoidal curve was cut off, so we call that clipping. Here, with the direct inputs, we call it saturation. Same phenomenon, but we just have it, it will look different because of the two different types of inputs. All right, then we have a second question. All right, so here we're gonna use a little voltage comparator. A voltage comparator in the illustration is used in an industrial process to switch off a boiler just as the temperature of a liquid reaches 6 to 5 degrees Celsius. The boiler switch is activated when the comparator output reaches 9 volts. So when the comparator um, reaches 9 volts, this boiler will switch off, right? And we have what you call a thermistor you would put in the boiler and the resistance of the thermistor varies with the, the in the the temperature, all right? So, so when this, when the output reaches nine volts, when this, when this output here reaches nine volts, right? And the, the open loop gain of the up, um, the up amp is 10,000, right? So this here is basically an open loop, um, 
up of the look at the operational amplifier all right and we see that the reference voltage here would be zero all right because it is connected to the earth and it is not connected to the positive power so this point at this point the potential is the same as the earth potential so and the potential of the earth is zero so the input to the inverting is zero and we can find out what v in is all right so let's let's look here again remember as in the first case when the current is coming the current will flow and none will flow in to the into the the input here so all the current will flow across here right and so we can use the same the same um reference we can say that um if the current through both of these is I, we can say that I times the 10 kilo ohms. So it's 10 I plus I times RT would be equal to 9 volts, right? Okay. All right. Now, here we also know that V in is equal to I times R. RT, all right? Okay, and so that I would be equal to V in over RT, and so we can make the we can make the substitution, all right? So if we substitute, we will have that um, first of all um, that this here will give that i times 10 plus rt would be equal to 9 all right and if we substitute for i so v in over rt plus 10 plus rt would be equal to 9 all right and if we if we we um rearrange this equation all right, we will have that, um, we will have that um, V in is equal to 9 RT over 10 plus RT. So we have that our, that's our situation. So it says um, the open loop gain of the operational amplifier is 10,000. And it says the, when the, comparator output reaches 9 volts right so when this here becomes 9 volts this when this becomes 9 volts then the, the thing switches on but when this becomes 9 volts we can find a value for v in all right because v in is equal to um let's let's start here we know that v out is equal to a naught times v in all right and so when this is nine volts this is ten thousand times v in so v in is equal to nine over ten thousand and let's call that nine by ten to the negative five volts so when v in is nine by ten to the negative five volts all right nine to, by ten to the negative four volts then we know that the, the the thing will switch off all right so we can substitute this now into this equation and find a value for rt i'll erase this side here all right so we will substitute so v in we said is nine by ten to the negative four is one two three nine that V in would be equal to 9 RT over 10 plus RT, okay? So we can cross multiply, we will have um, 0 0.1239 times 10 plus RT is equal 9 RT. If we, if we, that will give you this by 9 is 0 0.009 um, plus 0 0.009 RT, 0009. 
is equal to 9 RT and so um, we will have that um, 0 0.009 R one more zero um, 0 0.09 sorry is equal 9 RT minus 0 0.009 Zero nine RT, and then when we then we subtract, we can, okay, we will get that RT is equal zero point zero zero nine over nine minus zero point zero 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 nine, and that that will be the value of RT. Okay, so here we have used two things. All right, we have used the we have used the the gain as well as the potential divider here in order to determine at what at what resistance the so that's all today for our topic in cape physics